I'm just gonna continue to vlog until the book is finished. No idea how many words I have left. We are not going to bed until this book is done. Hello, hi, welcome to the vlog. I'm finishing my book this week. I have the guts left. And when I say guts, I don't mean the guts of the story, I mean the guts of the characters. <laughs> but it's the equivalent of a fantasy book where there's a large battle that covers the last good third, or I'm hoping not the full third, because that would be a lot of words. I feel like there's gonna be a lot more than I expect there to be, but it's a chunk. I feel like I have to write it in one spurt, or if I, if I go in and out of it too much, it will not be good. So I went to this coffee shop that I always go to um, and I'm always super productive there. And one cool thing is they have pieces of paper in all these cracks in the brick that people write notes in. Um, so it was quite a variety of things of like confessions of love and like random messages of hope and inspiration. Some people are like plugging their small businesses or drawing fun little pictures, leaving their phone numbers. Very like coming of age movie energy. Cute little Alyssa here did not realize how far away from the microphone she was sitting and so none of it actually turned out what she was saying but essentially she had kind of a bad day at work. It really just threw her off and so now she's just going to try to get to a certain point in the book. There's a very clear and evident switch that happens where everything goes from calm to very intense in the book. So that's what she's going to do. She's going to write up into the switch and then um, hopefully that will set her up for a great rest of the week of writing. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but things are going to go a little weird. I have been chugging away, plugging away? What's the phrase? Don't know. On um, the book. And it's funny now because now we're in the, the thick of it. So every time I go in, it's like I'm being hit by a truck because how it often goes, I'll like write for an hour in the morning and then I'll go to work and then I'll write after work. So I have like a full mental switch. Like I'm fully focused on something else and then I come back into it. So there's always that like initial like, oh my gosh, <laughs> people are dying. <laughs> my character is really going through the gambit and I'm just like behind the screen like ha ha ha, but also I have to, it's like first person. So I'm like emoting from her. And also I am redefining the word shit draft or zero draft. What I kind of like to think of in drafting, I have like four phases, right? And that doesn't mean four drafts. First draft is to just make it exist. The second series of drafting is to make it make sense. The third series is to make it beautiful. And the last one is to make it right. So first off, just putting words on a page, getting the story there. The second one is making it make sense. So oftentimes that has the most drafts. And that's where the first time I'll kind of just like read through it, rewrite my way through it. Haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet. I've heard this thing where you're supposed to like not even look at your first draft and just write it again from the start. But that seems like a lot of work, which is fine. But like, I feel like there's some good stuff. In and then making it right. 
is really the last thing I think about, but that's like making sure it's the right word count for querying. All the grammar is correct. Like making sure it follows industry standards and has a synopsis, like all that kind of publishy stuff. I am not published um, for my novels, but I'm currently querying my book I wrote in 2019. It's been in the trenches, but I spent a good month like really prepping and really getting all my materials ready. And now it's just kind of a revolving door. So when I get a response back, I just send out a different. I've gotten a few requests for pages, which is exciting. Maybe one. I think it was one. <laughs> this advice that I've heard is like, once you start querying, start another project right away. So you're not thinking about that project so much so that each rejection that comes in doesn't feel so personal. And when I tell you, <laughs> that's such good advice because Honestly, I'm writing this book now, and when the rejections come in, it's like, okay, honestly, I feel like this book is better anyway, even in the zero draft. So that's just the magic. If you're in the query trenches right now, bestie, start another project. Get everything ready, get everything good, get a system in place, but make it feel like that's just like a menial answering your email kind of task, not like a, my heart and soul is invested in this kind of a task. It is Friday. I don't think I've talked to you since like Wednesday, maybe? It has been a week. Remember on Sunday when I was like, finishing my book this week. It's not that that's impossible. Who knows? Maybe I'll get over this little hurdle that I'm at right now and the book will be like done. <laughs> Usually if I don't know how long something's gonna be, it's actually like five times longer than I think it is. Um, I have nothing tomorrow and I have nothing on Sunday because I have apparently no social life, which is a different issue. So I have all that time. The problem is, will I actually use it? I'm trying to figure out how to be productive just at my house without having to go somewhere. <laughs> anyway, it is Friday. Yesterday, I did not do any vlogging because my coworkers forced me to be social. It was funny, actually, I work in the like video advertising kind of space. And so I went to this event where we watched all of the Super Bowl commercials and like rated them and discussed them as like advertising professionals. It felt like I was in like an advertising class, but there was like alcohol and jokes. So not very much writing happened that day. And it's been just kind of a crap week at work. Number one, how dare you? And as much as you like to think, or I like to think that that doesn't affect my writing or my reading or any of my things outside of work, it does. It like adds to that decompression time I need and it adds to like my brain space. And so I ended up being a little bit more mentally busy this week, which seems like, am I like a fairy or something? I don't know. I'm not, but I guess a fairy would say that. So believe what you will. Anyway, um, so this evening, my plan was to be like, I'm gonna be super cozy and write. And hopefully that still happens. And I went to the Dollar General. Everyone, you are sleeping on the Dollar General and I know it. Don't look up the recalls because it's actually not recalls. It's just about the crowding in the store, which admittedly is a problem. But I had this lovely conversation with the cashier. Cause one thing I did, I thought would be fun was to like grab one of those like three dollar books that are there that are like the trashy romances because I've never read one and what if they're good like what if I'm sleeping on the three dollar book um and the cashier was like made this whole conversation about like nobody reads anymore anyway we had this great conversation about reading at the dollar general checkout which is always an experience it's always an experience um made some soup I have a bottle of wine I don't know you guys Last time I did this, everybody started kissing and this is not the time in the plot for kissing, although it might be. No. I just gotta crank it out. I gotta get in the headspace. I keep being like, ah, when I get in the headspace, I'll do it. No. Put yourself in the headspace. Get over it.
Um, so it is Sunday and you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wasn't the last time I checked in on Friday and I was going to like do a bunch of writing on Saturday. And you know, you would be right about that, that I did say that. And then what happened? You're never going to guess. You're literally, if you tried to guess what took up my Saturday, you're never going to guess. I ended up listening to two complete Australian dystopian audiobooks from like 2018. I don't know why. I don't know why. It really scratched that um, Divergent meets Shatter Me, but in Australia 10 years ago kind of an energy. And I really just needed that. But it was actually so good. But I think I've made a decision. I'm just going to continue to vlog until the book is finished. So who knows how long this vlog is going to be. Because it's one o'clock right now and I'm going to head to a coffee shop. The church I'm going to is like 30 minutes away, 25 minutes away at like 6.30. So if I go somewhere else that's near there, it'll be like too much of a nuisance for me to leave there. So if I go to, so do you see what I'm saying? So like, it'll be easier, path of least resistance. <laughs> if I go somewhere that's really close to where I need to be at 6.30, then I'll probably just stay there until 6.30. So then I'll get a lot of writing done. But we'll just see, again, I have no idea how much of this book I have left. I have three major plot points that I need, know I need to get through. And they might all happen at the same time. They might each take 5,000 words. It might be doable in six hours. We don't know. Hi, it is Wednesday morning um, and I think you're probably realizing why I wanted to finish this book, the book that I'm writing, that one, on Sunday is because this week is very busy. So I had a video shoot on Monday and those kind of just eat up my whole day. So hopefully I can sit down today and tomorrow and get the bulk of it done and then maybe finish it up on Saturday, but that'd be a full two weeks, everyone. This is a long vlog. It was so good on Sunday. I wrote for only like four hours. What I needed was a long enough chunk to get reinvested into the part that I'm in so that I can actually just like be excited to get into it every time and not be so like jarred every time. There's this space in your mind that when you're not thinking about anything, you start thinking about just like random things. And oftentimes, that will be like a book I'm reading or like scenes from books I like, or maybe a conversation that I have. It's just things that kind of play in your mind subconsciously that you're not really actively thinking about, but it kind of fills your whole day. So what I needed was to write for long enough that the story starts filling that back part of my brain. And it doesn't all the time, but now I'm a little bit more keyed in. You guys, I'm like so close. I've been writing a little bit this morning and I have, my hope is, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna finish it, but like, get right up to the edge. Okay, here's the game plan. We're going into survival mode because I don't want to write tomorrow, so I'm going to finish it today. No idea how many words I have left. No idea how the book ends. No idea. I mean, I have, I have ideas, obviously. Every hour on the hour, I'm going to check in with you. We're going to see word count. We're going to see progress. We are not going to bed until this book is done. <laughs> is 
done. Got 1,300 words written. And if you're asking, what am I thinking about? Where are my thoughts? Where am I at? I am thinking about the second book of the Crescent City series because I just finished it today and I have not had time to emotionally process it. If you don't know about this book, don't even read it. If you're currently watching this in the year, I don't know, 2078, and the third Crescent City book has come out, then you can read it. But if not, anyway, anyway, I have been writing and I've been writing a lot for like 1300 words. But for some reason, the last like five minutes, I've just been thinking about how this book ended. <laughs> Listen, what happened is when I write for a long time, even for like 30 minutes, my emotional center just opens and I just feel emotions. And I need to process. And that's what's happening. So we're going to change locations for the second hour. But I think we're going to get it done by midnight. second hour was good it required a lot more thinking and I realized there's a lot of like logistical things that come up in this section that I didn't really think through so there's a lot of like active writing of thinking of things which I guess you could argue happens at every point of writing also that has to be a horrible angle it's currently like 8 47 and I haven't really eaten anything except for a lot of scones so I probably should like make some dinner at some point. But this is why you're young, right? You know, to make things at 9 p.m. But like, maybe I can make some like mac and cheese and write while I make the mac and cheese. I just keep writing these random monologues. I'm like, girl, get to the plot. What are we doing? But they're like kind of good. At this point, I just need to like get to the end. I think Midnight is still doable. I should just stop writing so many artsy monologues and taking so many 18 minute breaks. Yeah. Hello, it's 11.18. I had some mac and cheese, but that was like two hours ago. I don't even know why I turned this camera on. I don't really think I have anything to say. <laughs> we're, we're gonna make it. Maybe. No, we are. It's like this whole like ending sequence is very long. And I've been writing it for like two weeks now. And I haven't really written in a couple of days. And to come back into it, it like feels like the beginning of this whole sequence is like where I started today. And so it feels like it's like not long enough or like there's there weren't enough things that happened. But then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this thing started like when I was writing two weeks ago. Like things have happened. I don't need to be worried about not enough happening. I just need to make sure that the plot finishes but like I don't want to rush the ending but also this isn't the time to worry about that I just don't want to like rob myself of the experience of finishing it but I don't think that's what's gonna happen but like it could like I wanted to feel like I finished the end and the thing is I have the last page <laughs> maybe I should read the scene from the beginning okay it's 11 20 I have 40 minutes until midnight that, those are just numbers. That's just how time works. I don't know why I'm telling you that. Let's do it. Spring. no one else lives here it's currently 12 19 a.m and you are seeing a shower curtain behind you and i'm gonna let you draw your own conclusion and i just finished my book <laughs> i feel great it all kind of flowed i'm just so glad i finished this before two in the morning you guys anyway well thank you for coming along this literal like two week journey with me Okay, to explain what's happening here, I bought an inspirational bookshelf to congratulate myself for finishing the book. Um, you will have seen stacks of books around my apartment in this video, and I've been waiting to buy a bookshelf until I finished my first draft. So here's an inspirational cut of me putting all the books on the bookshelf 
And I was gonna do this artsy metaphor about like finishing the first draft is really just like buying a bookshelf that you put together and like getting all of the pieces out. It's not really assembling it or putting the books on or screwing in any of the screws. All that comes in later drafts. This is just like getting all the parts of the bookshelf. But I decided I didn't want to be cheesy, but also I just told you it. So there's the metaphor, but make sure you go reward yourself if you just finished a draft like this, because even though you're looking at a literal pile of garbage, it's still a big accomplishment that a lot of people like never even get to. So you got to celebrate every step of the way. Okay, I did end up getting cheesy. 